and it, it's a great tool. But a professional realtor has even more tools to help you make those evaluations. Mm -hmm. So once Canty has been, and, and I love what she said, you know, intentionally helping you create a plan. It's all about being intentional, and it really is about personal as well. You want to be with somebody that you trust. Mm -hmm. You want to be with somebody that you're comfortable with because you're disclosing and making one of the biggest purchases of your life. So One of the biggest decisions. Stay true for a realtor as well. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. Right. We have to listen, both of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to I, what, you know, it, listening is so key. It is. Listening and hearing mm -hmm. are great because you're, you're, it's, it's scary. I don't care if you're buying the home for the first time or the tenth time. You know, you want to make sure you're making a good decision. You want to make sure you're not buying something that's going to hurt you in the long term. You want to make something that make sure you make a decision that's right for your family and your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I applaud people that buy a home because after they buy a home, you know, the sense of, of gain for the rest of your life is so strong, in, especially in this market. Yeah. Everybody, hold on. We'll be right back. And thank you for watching The Single Parent. We'll be right back with you. Welcome back to The Single Parent, everyone. I'm here with Paul Jamison and Canty Tull, and we're talking about what to do when you want to buy a home. We've already talked about that we need to make the decision to buy a home, to find a broker, and, um, and to uh, someone that you trust, and to find a realtor, also to find out how much you qualify for. Oh, just a quick word. Why a broker instead of a banker? Um, my feeling is, and as a broker, I, I decided to go the broker route because um, what I've got is capability of dealing with many different lenders. Mm -hmm. So I can go out and you tell me you have a particular need. One, one lender may not have a program, another person might. Um, mm -hmm. So I can go out and search for the product that fits your needs the best, and that's one of the most important reasons to do it. And a bank can do that. It's just, well, you know, if I if I bank. worked for a bank, they give me their set okay. of products and their sets of rates. But the way that I handle my business is, is I have um, relationships with many different vendors or lenders, so that I can go out and search. Um, plus, if there's there's a competitive advantage as well. Okay. Well, that makes sense. All right. So. Now we are at. We have found our realtor, and we are searching for a house that we like. What? Do, what what's next? Where do we go? Well, we've got some great tools as okay. realtors, and there are a lot of things that you can do. I mean, you can certainly go search out on your own, or you can ride around and look at open houses. Mm -hmm. But there's a great. That's product. what we did growing yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's. I mean, and, and back then, that's kind of the way that it was. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a tool called Gateway. Uh, that works through the, the MLS system, which is the multiple listing system, where all the realtors, which is a, is a certain, a whole nother story, um, where all of those listings reside. So we sit down with clients, or a realtor should sit down with a client, and first of all, get the minimum things. What are the things that are important to you? How many bedrooms do you need? How many bathrooms do you need? What area do you want to be in? Or areas do you want to be in? What is your price range? And you build a model. And what's nice about that model is you can look at all the listings that fit those criteria that populate a website on a daily basis. So there's a little personalized website just for you that has all those criteria. Mm. 
So you look at whatever hour is convenient and you can write little notes. Hey Paul, I really like this one, but you know, I'm not sure it's in a good area and I can write you back or call you and we can talk about those listings. Okay, so you can even look at crime rate and that sort of thing, see how safe an area is? Yeah, the best thing to do is to get on the police department's website and search those and make sure, you know, just like there are also other sites to make sure, you know, sex offender websites and other things, to make sure that the areas that you're looking in, you know uh, what's going on there and your realtor can assist you with those. Okay. That's an important tool, sure. Very great. So um, after you've found a home th that mm -hmm. you like, and you say, okay, these are the ones I want to check out. Do you just go take people to see them and then you just make an offer? Is it that simple? Well, sometimes. Uh -huh. uh, but other times I think when, when you start this process, you realize what you thought you wanted, hmm. you really changed. Okay. You know, you thought maybe these things were important to you and now you find that maybe they're not. Or other attributes as you begin to look become more important. Or certain areas that you thought maybe you weren't interested in, you become interested in. So it's a process. It's a give and take. It's a back and forth. It changes on an ongoing basis. And then it, let's say you do find that home. I'm a, we found the perfect home. We're all excited and it's time to negotiate. You know, my job is still just in the very beginning stages because then you've got to find out, well, what is that home worth? What is its value? What what are there are there issues in the area that are coming up about it? What is its history? What is its story? So you begin then to build. So uh, you can find out who lived there before. Oh, of course. Oh well. Even like no. if the walls could talk. Now that's the question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but interestingly enough, um, good realtors will go talk to the neighbors. Tell me about the house. Tell me about the neighborhood. It is amazing what you can find out. Are there kids? Your kids same age. You do want to know those things. Yeah, you do. I remember yeah. growing up, and um, we lived in this neighborhood where it just was frowned. The kids were kind of frowned yeah. upon, so every time we would ride our bikes in the neighborhood, some lady would come out, this is not a racetrack. Yeah. And we're like, we're not doing anything. And we weren't doing anything bad, really. <laughs> not for those years, anyway. <laughs> but, you know, you bring up a really good point. Yeah. You know, I think... You know, certainly what you always want to make sure you do before you begin this process is have a lot of prayer. Right. Because you want to put every roadblock yeah. in the way that you can before you get down the road. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's always the first, I think, the first and most important thing. The second thing is, is you do want to know who you're going to be living next to. You do want to know if they're nice people. I don't want to live next to a meanie uh, so, or someone that's not going to appreciate my kids, but I do want to know as much as I possibly can about that house. So you, I think you really did say it right. It does have a story mm -hmm. and it's got an important one that fits your lifestyle. So it's never a perfect science, but it's a pretty darn good one. Yeah, it yeah. just seems exciting, the whole process of buying a home and, and um, along with that exciting and, and everything that we talked about, um, what are some other things that we need to keep in mind? Um, one of the things, um, that came to my mind is, especially for the single parent, what if something happens down the road where, first of all, is this a good time to buy, but also um, if times get tough and with the economic downfall that we've had, um, if something like that happens in the future, a job loss, there's only one adult. If that one adult loses their job, right. what do you do? And you're stuck with this house payment? I mean, that's a scary thing to even consider. Um, what, what do we need a future plan for, or maybe I don't know the right question to ask, but do you know what I'm trying to ask? Yeah, I think, I think as you look at a house, a house, um, it has its story, it has its benefits, it has its right. features, but it is also an investment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And any good investment needs to be evaluated in many ways. Okay. Um, a one-sided investment says, well, if I have this purpose and this purpose only, then I need to have every amount of information I can to make sure that if anything else were to happen that this one single-sided investment is not at risk. For example, let's say the worst does happen. Mm -hmm. Let's say you lose your job or you lose your income and you can no longer make the house payment. Well, we all know kind of what's happening these days with that. There's foreclosures, there's short sales. But let's say, for example, if there's a risk of that, if this home could be leased 
it's an area that's in demand where you could leave